the Madman! Welcome to the Custom Hearthstone Cards of the Week. Today, we begin with a really spooky card, the Horcrux. But on top of that, additional spookiness ensues because this particular week, there happen to be a lot of cards using keywords from old expansions. And apparently, I'm notorious among the Custom Hearthstone community for rating all these old keywords negative scores. So stay tuned and see how we might fix these problems and ratings. So let's begin with the Horcrux. Three mana, zero two. Inspire. Ah! Gain plus one durability. When your hero dies, resurrect it with health equal to this weapon's durability and destroy this. There's a number of problems with this card, but the flavor is so good that I will overlook every single one of them and say design five stars, balance one star. There's actually so many problems with the design of this card that this is like the most criminal five star of all time, but sometimes your idea can be that good, I suppose. At problem number one, you can't name a card the Horcrux because JK Rowling will possibly come and sue you. That's actually true. I briefly looked up the law uh, before doing this review. Problem number two, and this is actually a significant problem, uh, this card has five lines of text. Hearthstone cards should be limited to four lines of text. This is a pretty complicated card, but I have a solution to this. Problem number three, there's a keyword inspire on it. Inspire is an old keyword in order not to have keyword bloat, which is to say that you have too many keywords floating around at the same time. But did you know that Inspire actually exists right now? It's on a card, it's called Dragonbane. After you use your hero power is the replacement for Inspire. But that has a problem with problem number two. This card should say, after you use your hero power, gain one durability. When your hero dies, resurrect it with health equal to this weapon's durability and destroy this. But that is like six or seven lines of text. And that's way too much text. Now there's also a fourth problem. The card's really, really weak right now. So, how do you fix this? So to balance it, I suggest putting the durability up to four and inspire gain plus two durability, which effectively makes your life taps free. And I think that's fun. On average, if you tap four times with this card out, and you know, you not only have to actually draw this card first and play it, then you need to tap an additional four times on top of that in order to even gain plus eight health or durability, then that would make it a total of three mana gain 12, but the card is still weak to something like ooze then. So problem one is easily fixed. You call it like phylactery. Kalthuzod's phylactery, whatever. The big question is, how do you change after you use your hero power, gain plus two durability when your hero dies, resurrect it with health equal to this weapon's durability and destroy this? Well, here's the proposition. After you use your hero power, this gains plus two durability. When your hero dies, be reborn in the phylactery. So it turns out you don't necessarily have to explain the entire mechanics of a card. See Zephyrus, for example. So there you have it. It's a way to break down the keyword, make it so that there's not overwhelming text, rebalance the card, and didn't get sued by JK Rowling. I'll call that a big win. Let's go into Micro Knight, Paladin 1 mana 1-1, one, one, Divine Shield. Battle Cry, give a 1 health minion, Divine Shield. Design 4 stars, balance 5 stars? So obviously this is quite a bit better of an Argent Squire, but I think this can still be okay, uh, assuming that Paladin isn't that strong. However, there is a problem with this card, which is why I took a point off of design. I believe the intent is to a play on the Paladin's one health minion theme. The problem though comes in this wording, Battle Cry give a one health minion divine shield. Currently the problem with that wording is if you have a 5-5 five, five minion and you trade into a 4-5, your minion's gonna become a 5-1. Then you can play your Micro Knight and give the 5-1 divine shield. And I don't believe that's the intent or spirit of the card. I believe what we need to fix the text to would be give an undamaged one health minion divine shield. Interesting thing about that result is that this also plays with equality, since equality sets all minions to one house, so there's a little bit of interesting synergy there. While I did rate this 5 stars balance, big asterisk, 
I don't think you release this card in today's meta because there's actually... Paladin's pretty strong and one health Paladin is actually pretty strong. I think you release this at a point where Paladin wants a strong card. So when I say balance five on a card that's blatant power creep, I mean, be very careful when you release this one. Talent Recruiter, two mana, one four. Inspire, add a random one cost minion to your hand. Design five star, balance five star. And again, yeah, it has Inspire on it, but you know, instead of Inspire, I'm just going to visually tell myself, this says, after you use your hero power, add a random one cost minion to your hand. I think it's uh, very fair. It's fine. Even though it's a two mana one four, which has the potential to snowball your advantage, adding random one cost minions to your hand probably won't snowball your advantage. Of course, uh, inspire effects are dangerous in Demon Hunter. I think it's okay to leave a one four on the board. Minimal effect, it's not aggressive in Demon Hunter. Possibly rewards a more control-based Demon Hunter. And it's just like, in general, it's a fair card. Dr. Frankenfin. Shaman three mana, three four legendary. Battlecry. If you're overloaded and control Murloc, transform it into Frankenfin's Amalgam. Frankenfin's Amalgam is 4 mana 4-4 four, four, uh, with charge and is all tribes. Design! Two stars. Balance, four stars. My major problem with this card is it's far too specific. It's a legendary which requires you to put it into a deck where you run overload cards and you're running Murlocs. And at that point, it's like, okay, it's just dictating what this entire deck is about. You might make the argument, well, isn't that what quests do? Yes, but quests always begin in your opening hand. And Dr. Frankenfin will only get its payoff if you draw him specifically alongside your Overload and your Murloc card, and you built your deck around it. And it's just, it's way too specific for a Legendary, uh, for any card. Uh, the card itself, it would probably be a fine power level. I think I would move Dr. Frankenfin down to a 3-3. That's about it. But again, the main problem is that such a card is just too specific. And it is a problem to have a card that basically only fits into a very specific deck. Rusted Reinforcements. One mana Warlock spell. Add three 1-1 one -one mechanical imps to your hand. They can be magnetized onto demons, turning them into mechs. Design, two stars, balance, four stars. This is a card that was designed flavor up, so to say. Perhaps you looked at the card and it's like, oh, hey, those are mechanical imps. There's three of them, so what about a card that adds three mechanical imps to your hand? What can we do that's interesting about these imps? Well, what about we can magnetize those onto demons? Uh, there was this Rusted Legion thing going on, which turned stuff uh, into mechs. That's the grand overview of the card, and from a flavor perspective, that's kind of cool. The problem is, sometimes flavor just cannot handle into gameplay. It's one mana add three one ones into your hand, and they have this side effect of being able to turn your demons into mechs, and then you can still magnetize mechanical imps into mech still, but effectively this will usually be 4 mana, give a demon plus 3 plus 3 and turn into a mech. It's an interesting idea, but this flavor isn't bringing enough gameplay into it. You're not going to run a demon mech deck, it's not incentivizing enough, and it's not interesting enough. Turning your demons into mechs just doesn't really have any importance at all. Now, if there were a set that somehow rewarded you for turning your demons into mechs, then maybe you play Rusted Reinforcements in that. But boy, is that very hard to imagine. And then the theory is, okay, well, the expansion symbol for this card, it is from the Outland. So the author is suggesting that they did put this in, but did you know that in Outland, you also uh, rotated out Magnetize? Uh, so basically, it was completely pointless to even have this card. Swordbreaker, a warrior, four mana, four, five. Battle cry, if you have a weapon equipped, equip a weapon from your deck. Design five stars, balance four stars. I actually think this is a really cool idea. 
Uh, it's the type of card that you look at the effect initially and you're like, wow, that's pointless. If I have a weapon equipped, I don't want to equip a weapon from my deck. I want to use that weapon. It turns out that this card could actually be really imbalanced because if you have cards that equip weapons without actually being weapons in your deck, you rally that into Sword Breaking into Gorehowl or Arcanite Reaper, and that's a massive gain. It's such a massive gain that this card probably is a little too overpowered and should be toned down to a 4-4. Uh, but that would make for an interesting deck, and I actually like this card quite a bit. You do have to be careful with a card like this. Any card where you can cheat out something could be imbalanced. And there's an evergreen card in the core set card, Gore Howl, where if you can just ramp into Gore Howl on turn four, that is actually perhaps imbalanced as the core focus of a deck. That requires a significant testing on whether or not that's OP as a deck idea. So that's how something as innocuous as this card could actually be ridiculously OP and why so many cards need a bunch of testing. Turn Undead. It's a dual class Paladin and Priest spell for one mana. Twin spell, Silence a Minion. If it had a Death Rattle, also deal four damage to it. Design, two stars, balance, two stars. Paladin should not have access to silencing. And it's important that every single class has their own unique mechanics to it. Silence is a mechanic that currently belongs to Priest, and it belongs to Demon Hunter. And it's a clever way to introduce to um, classes the idea of the shared class can be the one providing the thing. So I can I can see that. It's like a dual class paladin and priest card. So you can claim, okay, it's a priest side that's giving the paladin the ability to silence. But I actually think like even that isn't enough justification because it's just so light. I understand that Turn Undead is something that Paladins and Priests are both kind of flavorfully known to do, so I like the idea of a card, Turning Undead, that's shared amongst the two classes, but giving Paladins silence is just too much. I think it's possible to put this card in only Priest, because it has Twin Spell on it, which is an old keyword you would need to write out the whole thing extra arm style, which means you would not be able to have the extra text of if it had a death rattle, also deal four damage to it, which by the way is way too overpowered anyways. And then it would just turn into a silence of minion, add another copy of silence to your hand, which is not really that interesting a card. So we're gonna shelve this one. Uh, too many things that need fixing, I think. Title Defender. 5 mana 5 2 Warrior Paladin card. Rush, Divine Shield. Overkill. <laughs> Gain Divine Shield. Overkill. Why are we bringing back Overkill also? Design 2 stars, balance 3 stars. You could simply replace the word Overkill with the full text, which would be whenever this deals excess damage to a minion, gain Divine Shield. The problem I have with this card is it's a perpetual Divine Shield gaining machine. Uh, in a way, this is like Rush, Divine Shield, and immune while attacking if it has Divine Shield. That's basically what it has. And that's actually super, super oppressive. If your opponent has no answer, you just keep killing their minions, and then, you know, they just cry. So the lesson here, don't put perpetual gain Divine Shield on cards when you don't need any other cards to support it. It's just such a big problem that even if you altered the stats or whatnot, the card's also a bit paladin, so if you lower the stats, you just buff it, and then you just keep overkilling and gain divine shield. Basically, overkill gain divine shield is not okay. That's not okay. Especially not okay on a card that's already this well statted. If you do want to put overkill gain divine shield on a card, its stats really must suck. We're talking like 5 mana 2-2 two, two, Rush Divine Shield, Overkill Gain Divine Shield, but then the card looks ridiculous. Puppet Master Lazul. A Priest 5 mana 3-5 Legendary. Battle Cry, summon a 1-1 one, one copy of each minion in your opponent's hand. Design 3 stars, balance 2 stars. There's a major problem with this card in its current state, which is the sheer amount of variability, the swings that can be created from this card. If your opponent is unfortunate enough to be holding 
cards with death rattle or a lot of them. Puppet Master Lazul is a monster. The card's currently balanced around just summoning two on once, then you have a five mana five seven. But the moment you get any kind of good effect going, the card quickly becomes insane. How do you fix this kind of card, which baseline is good, but is just ridiculous if it high rolls at all? Well, I thought something that might be interesting and also play to the current iteration of Madame Lazul discovering cards from the opponent hand would be, that'll cry, discover a minion in your opponent's hand and summon a 1-1 one -one copy of it. That way, it still has that legendary quality to it because you're doing something really unique. You're selecting a card from your opponent's hand, you're getting the information from them, and you're getting the best choice. And then sometimes you get a really insane result, as a legendary perhaps should do. I think that's fine. It reduces the power level quite a bit when you're getting exactly one 1-1 one -one copy of an opponent's minion from your opponent's hand. And let's take it to the trump card of the week. It's Soul Separation. Who made a dual class priest warlock card? Destroy a friendly minion, summon a zombie with its stats, and a 1-1 one -one ghost with its abilities. Design five stars, balance five stars. One interesting thing about this card is this is actually a borrowed idea off of Magic the Gathering's Soul Separator. But at the same time, it's a very different card because Soul Separator has to deal with the graveyard and it costs a total of eight mana to use. Unlike Soul Separation, it's it's quite different. And I think cards that are adapted from other games can often be pretty cool. This card is kind of like a Priest Warlock version of Reincarnate, but there's key differences which make it interesting. You don't, unlike Reincarnate, get a minion back to its full health. So you don't cheat extra health that way. Uh, you do get a 1-1 extra. And if you put it on a death rattle and or reborn, which is probably what you want to do, it's easier to get the death rattle and or reborn effect again because it's put onto a 1-1 ghost. I think this is a mechanic that's especially interesting in Hearthstone because you dictate where your 1-1 attacks and you can easily attack and kill. Whereas in a game like Magic the Gathering, uh, your 1-1, one -one, your opponent's just not going to block it. There's a few good targets for it, just in general stuff with Death Rattle, stuff with Reborn. Uh, very flavorful as well, and it's definitely stuff that Priests and Warlocks would both do. They perform cruel and twisted experiments on... things. So thank you for joining me in this spooky edition of Oh my god, they added all these crazy old keywords to try to mess with me. But uh, moving forward, I'm just going to take the high road and assume that that keyword would just have the full text written out uh, if it's an old, really old keyword.